Well, hello people, and welcome for the first time to Manor Lords. I hope you're having a wonderful day. By the way, the passion project of Slavic Magic, the solo developer, has come so far, and now we are finally able to play one of the most unique games I think we've ever seen. A combination of city building mixed with real-time strategy, and Manor Lords does it excellently well. For our first series on Manor Lords, we will be exploring the Manor Lords Survival Guide, where we'll take a nice slow approach to the game and explore its mechanics together and show you how you can get started in the early game when you guys can eventually play this on the 26th of April. And if you are looking forward to more Manor World content, don't forget to subscribe as well. We are on our march to 100,000 subscribers. So if you're interested in some more Manor World content, definitely subscribe. You can expect a lot of it on the channel going forward now we have access to the game. So without further ado, let's get started with a brand new game shall we? So when you click your new game, you will be able to pick a Lord Avatar. This doesn't have too much impact at the minute, the third person perspective walk around won't generate as this character, but you can pick whichever one you want. This guy down here, Fritz, looks most like an egg to me, so let's go with him. We'll also give our Lord a name. The next stage is to develop a coat of arms. Now there's a ton of different patterns and combinations you can put together here. So spend some time customising your emblem and trying out different combinations and colour schemes and see which one you like. Again, at this point in the game, the emblem is just a visual thing, but it's something unique to your village. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to go for a repeated wall pattern on the coat of arms with a little blue. I think that's pretty pretty simple and tasteful. And so once you're happy with your coat of arms, of course, you want to come in and hit continue. And then you're greeted with a number of things here. So let's run through uh, what we're actually looking at. So there's a few scenario templates in the early access build. Uh, Rise to Prosperity is to just build, basically. There's no of the RTS element in Rise to Prosperity. If you just want to play Manor Lords as a city builder, then Rise to Prosperity is what you should play. You can plan and rule as you see fit without worrying about combat. Next is Restoring the Peace, where there are two territories in the north claimed by the illegitimate Baron whose castle is located off-map. Bandit camps reside in the other unclaimed regions. You can build and expand at your own pace, and when you feel ready, you can challenge the Baron for the northern territories. This is the game mode we will be playing together. This, for me, is kind of the quintessential Manor Lords experience. And then the last one here is On the Edge, which is a little bit more of a hardcore experience where you need to grow and raise forces as quickly as possible with raiders being much more frequent. But for the sake of this series, I imagine most of the series we'll play, we will be playing on restoring the peace. There are also some difficulty templates you can choose from here as well, including relaxing, which just kind of tones everything down a little bit, changes your raider frequencies to none, reduces the number of bandit camp spawns, etc. But I'm just gonna play on the regular default here and you can customise the sandbox to your liking, what season you start in, how many supplies you have. So you can make it as hard or as challenging as you like, but for the right now, for the sake of the Manor Lord Survival Guide, we're going to leave it on restoring the peace on the default template. Let's begin, shall we? So I want to try and leave as little editing in this series as I can so you guys can get a thorough experience of how this handles and plays. So we will first of all load into our village and be given a new message. Build up your town, your manor, and when ready, press claim towards regions owned by your opponents. Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. I'll unite these lands under my rule. Wonderful. So first of all, let's just give our game a little pause, which we can do by hitting the spacebar. This will also resume the game as well. And I'd just like to run over what exactly we're looking at here with the interface before we start playing. So up at the top here, we have our population. Now this is broken down into families. So you assign a family to a job and we'll get a little bit more into this as we start to place down some buildings. For right now, we have five unassigned families and zero assigned because we have nowhere to assign them to at the moment. So unassigned families will work on construction and they will also guide the ox to transport timber around where it's needed as well. We'll discuss this more as the series goes on and we come to use them a little bit more. 
Currently, we have zero living space, so we need to build some houses. We can also see this as a complaint over here as well, where we have homelessness. Because we have five homeless families, and we can also see we have five unassigned families up here. So all five families in the city are currently homeless. The figure next to this is also our total population. So of our five families, there is a total of 10 people. Next to this is a approval rating. So in order to grow your population, this must be above 50%. And you keep it up by making sure people have a variety of food and clothes. If you've played a survival game before, you kind of know how to keep people happy here. Next up is public order, which is just a metric of how happy the populace actually is and how likely they are to rebel. We then come on to regional wealth, which is different to your personal wealth. So here we have regional wealth, which is used to upgrade houses, to buy animals, to open trade routes. And then over here in the top right, we also have treasury wealth, which is the Lord's wealth. This is used in diplomacy for hiring soldiers and mercenaries, as well as settling new regions. We won't gain any treasury wealth until we build the first manor. So don't worry about this just yet. But there are two different wealth pools in manor lords, which is important to understand. Next up, we have livestock, which for right now we only have one oxen. We can also buy horses and mules, which can be used for trade. And there's also sheep available for livestock farming as well. And next to this is the number of months of food we have before supplies run out. Well, food and fuel. Fuel either being charcoal or firewood. And food being, well, food. There's currently meat, veg, berries, bread, eggs, apples and honey available in the early access version. We then come onto the name of our settlement here. If you click on this, you will open up the development tree. We will explore this a little later on in the episode as we begin to gain some development points, but just know this is how you access it alongside some policies and a production tab which is currently empty in the first phase of early access. However, expect this to develop over time, of course. Just beneath this, we also have some warnings where you will find warnings about the town that need to be resolved. And then just beneath this, there will also be an event feed such as bandit scene, work areas need to be worked on, missing workers, etc. Anything that is of importance for you to know will appear within the events feed. And to the right hand side here, we just have a collection of our resources, which is broken down into construction, food, fuel, crops, crafting materials, which includes things like grain, hides, leather, wool, anything that can be crafted into something else. And then there's also commodities, which will be used to keep higher level houses happy, but we'll come on to these a little bit later. And then our military supply as well, where currently we have nothing to supply our military with. Down here at the bottom, we also have our roads menu, a construction menu where we can build, an army menu, which we'll cover later on. And then we also have our map, which can also be accessed by pressing the letter M. And you'll notice that this brings up the map interface, which is really cool. And you'll also notice as to whatever um, territory you spawn into. Uh, right now we are down here in this bottom one. But you will see your roads and buildings be etched onto the map as it expands. It's a really cool map system. Uh, so you will randomly spawn in any of these provinces here. And the resources randomly roll every time as well. It's not always the same and not everything's always in the same place. So if you're not particularly happy with your start location, do feel free to re-roll it. Either way, let's come back to our village and start building up our first settlement, shall we? So let's play the game. We can do this again by hitting the space bar to resume the simulation. And the first thing we absolutely must build is a logging camp. This is going to produce timber, which is going to be represented up here. You'll also notice that when you come into your construction menu, which you can also hit by pressing the letter C, that our resources up here at the top change. So we can see we now have eight timber, zero planks and 20 stone. So, first thing you want to build is a logging camp. Now, we obviously want this to be in a big forested area. But let's analyze our situation here. I can see that we have wild animals and berries over here. So, I certainly don't want to deforest this region. This is going to be quite important for the settlement's food. So, with that in mind, I can see the next best area here for deforestation is going to be this area over this way. So, let's place down our logging camp. Now, I'm going to place this about here i think that seems pretty nice so all unassigned families will work on the construction automatically and you can really follow the simulation here and um, it's very fun to just sit and observe manor lords um, an extremely pretty game that sounds 
and looks gorgeous. I am thoroughly in love with this. <laughs> it is such a charming experience. You can see the tents flapping in the wind. It's just a really stunning project. Slavic Magic has to be incredibly proud of what he started here. And of course he's had some help along the way as well. You know, it isn't just him, but it's his passion project and he has done a phenomenal job of it. So this is it now, right? Our villagers are going to come over here and they're going to start building up our logging camp. That's going to start giving us uh, some timber, of course, which is very important for the construction of the village. Uh, after this, we want to come back into construction and we want to stay on the gathering tab. And the next thing we're going to need is a woodcutter's lodge, which is going to give us fuel, which is very important as well. So let's also place this over nearby our forestry. Let's have it there, shall we? So I like to kind of position my different assets together so it kind of looks like one giant cohesive workyard. So I'm going to place a woodcutter's lodge over here. Let's also take a look at the building process here as well. You can see each little sort of strut and support being be added onto the building as the people around it build. It's very cute isn't it? <laughs> I am very happy everyone to be playing Manor Lords finally after so many years, goodness gracious. But I hope you're looking forward to the Man Awards content on the channel. Cool. So you also get a little icon here. Over the building. That just indicates it's build progress. It's just hit halfway. And that circle will come full circle to complete eventually as well. So coming back to where the city started. Uh, we currently have some homeless tents. Because there's nowhere for people to live at the minute. And then we also have some supplies on the floor over here as well. Um, we need to house these supplies pretty quickly, otherwise they're going to get wet and they're going to ruin. Um, weather is very much a real thing in this game. So the next thing we want to build is going to be um, our logistics centres. So let's go ahead and build a granary, first of all. This is going to store all of this bread that's out on the floor and stop it from getting wet. Uh, so let's have an idea of where we want to draw this in. Let's first of all do some roads, which we can also reach by pressing R. And then you'll notice that each of the buildings here, they have a little kind of node snap point. It's important that buildings are connected with roads so that people with carts can get to them to transport goods more efficiently. So let's have this run down toward the main road here. And we'll start building our town around this. I'm also going to bring a road down here as well. And then also just some simple desire lines, you know, where I would expect people to take shortcuts across the grass. I think it can add quite a little bit of realism um, into your first village. You'll also notice as well how these roads just snap seamlessly together um, onto the assets. It's very nice. So we're nearly done here. Of course, you can speed this up as well. You can also increase and decrease the flow of time with Z and X on your keyboard rather than always using the speed controls down in the bottom right. And we also have a new message, so let's give this a read. I have heard of your renown, I only seek to defend my rights and my honour against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumours and slanders that some have spread about me. Signed and sealed by my own seal of Hildebalt von Berenut. So we can write back to him. Uh, the diplomacy at the minute isn't massively fleshed out, of course, this is just early access. But there's rhetorics, negotiations and declarations up here at the top. You can't do anything other than right now than just say you have no rightful claim to Salbitz and Hofstetten, which are two other provinces on our map. So we can drag this into here, and then we can send it back to him. So he was trying to claim Salbitz over here, and another province as well, wasn't it? Whichever one it was over these one, this one was it? So that's what he's trying to do, anyway. But diplomacy is not a massive part of the game at the minute, especially in the early game. So expect that to grow over time. If you also ever get lost on the map and you don't know where you are, you can press T to return to your town centre. Fantastic. So this is great. So let's go ahead and get that granary built. Um, why don't we start our town centre around here where we've got our hitching posts and a tent as well. So we'll have granary here for right now. And then shortly after that, we're also going to need to build a storehouse so we can store everything else on the floor here. So the workers will collect, store and distribute goods using generic storage. If needed, they will automatically also set up stores on the marketplace to distribute goods 
to burgage plots. Burgage plots are also known as houses here. Definitely a medieval term. Cool, so where are we going to put our storehouse? Eventually I'd like the storehouse to be near the trading post. So let's go ahead and add the storehouse on the road over here. And we can also see that we now have our logging camp built. So we want to add a family into this. So this isn't just one person working the logging camp. It's a family of people. In this case, the family is two people. By making them happier and meeting all of their pre-war conditions, more people will come and join a single family and also new families will come and join as well. So we now have one family which consists of two people currently felling trees. Let's come into our advanced menu and we want to hit the limit work area. So this is just the area of where they will undertake their task. In the case of the logging camp this is felling trees. Now if we hold control we can scroll this value to increase to pretty large really. So I know I'm going to build my village over here and I pretty much want all this area to be deforested. I'm going to hold control and scroll and then I'm going to fill this entire space and now over time my logging camp will clear that entire area. I also want to do the same thing as well with my woodcutter's lodge. I'm going to add another family into this, come to the advanced tab and then I'm also going to increase the work area. Again I'm going to make it fairly large because fuel is always needed and is constantly needed as well. And maybe he can clear a similar area, if not a slight overlap, with the logging camp. But now over time, we will see this forest clear out. We don't want to do this where we see animals and berries, because the deforesters, well, the, the foresters rather, will scare away the animals, and they'll also cut down the berry bushes. So that's not something we want to do. But this, for right now, is going quite well. We can see some more building animation here as well. Our granary is getting built. This is great news, isn't it? We do have timber coming in now as well, courtesy of our logging camps. And we're also starting to stockpile some fuel as well, which is very nice. So right now we only have three months of food, which isn't really that much to be honest. So every map you start will have access to either wild animals or berry deposits. Some of these deposits will spawn in as rich deposits. And what this means is that there's just more than usual. So you can see here our berries have a little crown on them and it tells you when you hover over it that it is a rich deposit of berries. So we want to come over here because this is going to give us quite a lot of food. At the minute there doesn't seem to be much of a spoilage mechanic with the food so don't worry about harvesting berries. They will last a very long time. At least at the recording of this video I imagine in the future with further updates this is going to change. So let's come back into our gathering and we want to grab our forager's hut where workers will gather berries from nearby berry deposits, which is absolutely wonderful. And we want to make sure that they don't walk through this area, otherwise they're going to cause these animals to migrate. And at some point, I'm going to want to start uh, using these animals for food and pelts. So let's place down our berry hut. I'm going to have this over here. I'll try to place it where they don't have to cut down any trees. And then I'm going to build a road from this. You can also use control here as well to control road curvature. So if you want a much more bendy, wiggly road, then you can do that just by controlling your curvature. And if you want a much more straight roads to build grids and boxes off, then you can just bring that road curvature back down. So now here we have our forager's hut, which is currently under construction. And our three unassigned families that will work on construction will now begin to bring the resources over there to build it. You'll also notice the ox, which is what our livestock counter was talking about earlier. Let's have a little look at this guy. So you will see him, he's dragging timber logs. Obviously these people cannot carry a log by themselves. They do need an ox to do it. Obviously, the more building projects you're taking on, the longer it's going to take this ox to get around to all of them, which is a point you may consider wanting to buy another ox, which you can do via the hitching post or the livestock trader. You can come over to your hitching post here order another ox or order a new horse this can only be done once a month so be careful with what you do this also costs regional wealth not treasury wealth so that's a good example of how regional wealth is being used there fabulous so now we can see that we have exposed goods this is what we were talking about earlier so we need to add a working family to our granary they will now go and gather the food and store it in the granary so it doesn't get destroyed by rain now we're now facing the prospect 
of having five homeless sims. Now, we don't currently have the timber to build five homes because it costs, I think it's two timber per home, I think. But let's come back into our construction menu, again, which we can access by pressing C on the keyboard. And we can come into our residential plots here. So each residential plot does require two timber. We are now, of course, gathering timber via our logging camp. So let's draw this out. So Manor Wards has some of the best um, housing zoning I've ever seen in a video game. It adapts to whatever space and shape you want. And there's a few things really I want to talk about with the zoning. Um, so let's first of all sketch out some roads. Um, the village is dangerously close to this wild animal, so I don't really want to go in that direction. Why don't we calm down here, for example? So I'm going to draw up some roads here as a bit of a home base for our first sims, or first villagers rather. And let's just draw in some basic little frames for them here. Nothing too complicated. So now let's grab our burgage plots and when you draw this out you need to draw um, four points. Now you can see this little arrow pointing to the south of the screen here. This is the direction of which your houses are going to face. Then as you draw them up, you'll see that this is a little too much. We need 14 timber to build this. But let's just reduce our plot size here a little bit. So let's do... Well, let's see if we can just build two of them first. Wonderful. So when we come to build our houses here, I want you to take notice of that little shed with a hammer that is appearing in the back garden of the home. This is going to be really useful to us later on because what this essentially means is that this house will be big enough for a back garden extension where you can put things like vegetable plots, chickens and goats. They're really useful for propping up our food supply a little later on in the game. So when I'm drawing my houses, I want to make sure that they have this little house with the hammer in the back garden. Go ahead and tell those to start building as well. So right now we're just waiting for that timber to come in. I'm also going to make some further road connections where it makes sense as well. Now let's get people back into from the residential over here. I also want to connect in my granary up here as well. Now let's connect this into the trading posts and the supplies. And we'll have a bit of a loop around here. You don't need to build roads. They are just an instantaneous appearance. You don't need to wait for people to come mine them out. So right now, we, our approval rating is going down because we have five homeless sims, but we are now starting to address this uh, with those burgage plots. So the first thing you want to do is just to make sure that we can get all these sims housed. Because uh, approval rating is incredibly important for being able to grow and bring new people into the village. So this is under construction. We can see the ox there right now. He's just dropped off um, a log over here. It's just... It's such a charming game, honestly. I don't think I've ever had a game like this where I can just sit and watch and enjoy the simulation unfold. Um, there's nothing that looks like it. I'm sure you guys are enjoying the soundtrack as well today. It's uh, it's truly wonderful. <laughs> I'm absolutely just still fun fangirling big time over this. <laughs> so I hope you can um, enjoy my sort of enthusiasm if you like. I'm extremely excited to play this game. Uh, so we still have exposed goods, uh, that's fine, that's because we don't have anyone working at our storehouse. So now we have assigned a family, uh, they will come and collect those goods so they don't get ruined due to exposure. There is also another thing you should factor into Manor Lords, is that you always want at least one unassigned family. Because if there's no one to guide the ox to move timber, and no one to build the things that you need to build in order to expand and keep the production chains going, then you're going to grind to a halt. So always have at least one unassigned family. In the early game, you will probably need to remove and add families to different buildings in order to manage their different resources. But you will only need to do that for so long. Eventually, you will have the population surpluses to keep everyone stocked up. So right now, we're waiting on some more timber to build the houses. Our berries are being built, and we're just waiting on things to generally build up that we've just placed down. So let's just for a moment enjoy the sight and sounds of Manor Lords, shall we? Why do I have to carry this alone? Summer's coming 
soon, and soon the beating sun. Fantastic. So our berry uh, hunters or foragers hut have now been built. So we can add another family in. However, I'm going to do this and you now notice we dropped zero assigned families, which means construction across the province grinds to a halt, which is bad. So let's first of all set up the advanced work area here. And we want him to grab these berries here, which is wonderful. As you also see the work in here that we have unassigned families. So for right now, um, all of my bread has been brought in, so I'm actually going to remove the worker from the granary. All the current food is stored there, so he doesn't need to work there anymore. That family can go back to working on construction. Now, as we said, our next goal is to get enough timber. We've now got six more timber, so we can work on more burgage plots. Let's go ahead and have some next door to the ones we've already built. Let's try go... Well, three more there. That's six timber, and that is five houses we need to house our population. So we can now increase our simulation speed by pressing X again. I'll always try and include keyboard shortcuts here. It does make the um, experience a little more natural, I think. Uh, we can also see another warning where families are requesting more market area for their stores. So families that work in storehouses, in woodcutters lodges, in granaries, will want to set up stores in order to sell their produce that their respective building makes. So we can do this by coming into construction and we also want to hit marketplace here as well so this is going to spawn in a bunch of really nice little huts and market stores so we're clearly developing a bit of a main street down here okay so let's have our market over here i'd also like to draw out some roads to hold it as well if possible so why don't we have our little market space here around our storehouse and also where I envision I'm eventually going to have my trading post. So this can be a bit of a hub for our village if you like. So let's come into our marketplace and I want to draw in at this area here. Very similar to how you draw in your houses. So we can have eight available market stores here. That's more than enough for a starting village. I think I'm going to end it a little bit soon. I don't want it right up against the road here. Uh, let's do five. That should be okay. Uh, we also need to build a well. We'll also cover this as well while it's come up. Uh, but a well-supplied marketplace is the lifeblood of your town. Um, assigned families will set up stalls automatically as long as there is enough space on the market. Uh, you can hover over specific categories to see how the supply and demand is faring. And burgage plots slash homes closest to the market get their requirements fulfilled first. So you'll, you'll see how these spawn in in a minute. Now let's go ahead and see if we can... There we go, yeah. So there's a food store under construction here. So if we go and check our berry gatherer, we can now see he has... Well, this family owns a market stall. So they're selling the berries that you get there. Now the term selling might confuse you here. Um, you're not going to make any regional wealth from this. This is purely to satisfy villager needs. You know, people need a market stall to come and buy food. And we can also see that the storehouse has set up a market store now as well. So she's setting up a firewood store because her family works in the storehouse and the storehouse is currently stocking firewood. It's a pretty basic system to get to grips with, but it's really nice with how it works, to be totally honest, and big fan of it. So that's a pretty basic rundown. What we also need as well um, for people to survive, of course, is a well. So when we click on our well, uh, we will be greeted with a underground water source heat map which you can see are these big blue streaks flowing in various different directions all across the province okay so let's say for example we want to well we have to place them on a uh, underground water source and there's none over here is the yeah we're on the very southern edge of the map here so let's have this over here just near the trees seems a pretty sensible spot. And we'll also connect that in with a road as well. But now people will be able to have water. 
to live, of course. And we, uh, we do just have our, our construction finished at the food store. But this is like, it's just fabulous. You're going to see this guy now, or this family at least, come and stock blueberries at the market store, and then they're going to sell them. It's, it's very exciting, <laughs> as I'm sure you can understand. Wonderful. So people are now moving stuff back into to the storehouse. This is the importance of drawing roads to your um, production sites. If they didn't have the road here, they wouldn't be able to get the cart through. Because obviously you can imagine if we didn't have the road and they were traversing this sort of terrain, you can't really pull a cart through here, right? So that's why roads are important. Really don't underestimate them. It really improves your logistics and production. So definitely draw roads to whatever you're building. Cool. So we'll see these guys go over now. Uh, we're really just waiting for our um, burger plots to tick over, which hopefully they won't be too far away with now. Uh, in terms of what comes next and what you can start sort of looking towards for the future, uh, we have a pretty reliable food source right now, so I'll show you kind of the food mechanic here. So at the minute we have 22 berries and 15 bread. This is going to last us seven months, <laughs> which is... Make, makes you question what sort of berries they are, right? If they're lasting seven months in storage. Especially the bread as well. So there doesn't seem to be too much of a spoilage mechanic at the minute. I'm guessing that's going to come down the line. But just to help speed up the build process of our uh, houses, I'm actually just going to go ahead and remove the berry gatherer because we've currently got tons of food. We've got 12 months to be exact. But right now, food isn't super important. You can also do the same with the firewood chopper as well so whichever one you want to remove you should be able to and now we have two unassigned families which means that all our construction across the village is going to go a little bit quicker so let's watch all our homes grow up shall we superb there we have it so five homes that have now filled the space that we marked out and uh, they're really pretty fantastic looking assets so when you see um a house with like a little bit of scrap in the back of it this just means that it is available uh for an upgrade but first of all we have a settlement uh increase level so we'll uh, we'll check that out in a hot minute here okay so we have new development point let's also check the new message so a strong militia is paramount to the survival of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived and you will now be able to create your first militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, we will need more weapons to equip all the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. So let's form the militia. So let's take a look at our army tab for the first time. So we want to create a new unit. So currently, we can only recruit four different types of unit and we can also recruit mercenaries right now currently we don't have the wealth to recruit mercenaries this is done using your treasury wealth up here not regional wealth but we can't afford these yet the way we make treasury is via tax revenue which we'll get to later on in this series so for right now i'm just going to recruit a i mean let's we'll see what weapons we have we have 20 spears and 20 shields so i'm going to recruit some spare militia. And so the, the male villagers will evenly distribute between all of your militia units. Then they will try to find the required equipment, which should be stored at your storehouse. And the weapon and shield depends on the unit type, while the maximum quality of body armor and helmet depends on the villager's residential level. After bringing all the necessary equipment home, unit recruits are marked as ready to rally. Only then will you be able to rally your unit. So you can click on it and you can tell it to rally here. This will mean that all 10 boys and men in that unit will run and gather their equipment and come meet at this spot. We won't be doing any fighting just yet for a couple of episodes, but you can recruit your first unit once you get that message. We've also just gained our first development point, which is very exciting because we can now expand across the tech tree. Having spent quite a few hours in Manor Wards now doing various different starts, I can certainly see that there's a path to follow here. 
Um, I would highly recommend getting trade logistics, having only having to only pay 25 regional wealth to unlock all future trade routes is super useful, especially as we get into the later early game. I would also suggest if you're working with berries, um, you can double the capacity of all your berry deposits. However, you might also be playing with a rich wild animal deposit, which means that trapping would also be really useful for you as well. Uh, beekeeping is also a nice way to get some extra food in, but not something you should probably unlock first. So I'm going to spend my first two trade points. You can also come down here as well for basic armoring, which will give you, you know, some new armors and stuff. But I wouldn't waste your first development points here. You can also get an orchidry as well to grow apples, but you won't see the benefit of that for the first three years. Sheep breeding and, and, and livestock and farming is a little way down the road yet. So wasting your first development point here, I wouldn't recommend. So just because I have that rich berry deposit in my province, I'm going to spend my first development point on forest management, which is going to double the capacity of all of my berries. So everyone's going to choose different things on that first point, I think, based on what you've got in your province. Uh, so these are seasonal. Now we've got those houses built. I'm going to send my forager back to carry on gathering berries, and we're going to keep stockpiling that food. We've got plenty of food right now and our homelessness kind of disapproval rating will start going down now because we have housed everyone because as this here we have five uh, the living space for five families and we have five families in the settlement in total but things are going quite well we have 17 timber now 10 stone that uh, stone is definitely another resource we want to look into in the not too distant future and um, the stone deposit for this map is quite a ways away actually it's all the way over here so we'll have to build that up eventually uh, let's go ahead and mark that out right now we've also got two mines over here as well this province has a rich iron deposit and it also has a rich uh, just a regular clay deposit so i can definitely see me making a lot of my money from iron because i have the rich iron deposit here but we'll cover that later on. We probably won't get into iron mining today, but it's good to know that that resource is there for us. We're experiencing a thunderstorm as well at the minute. The weather effects in Manor Lords are absolutely gorgeous. Please do just take some time to bask in the atmospheric ambience that this game brings. It's, uh, it's truly something else, isn't it? This is an early access title as well, everyone, so... Please just bear that in mind, the quality we're already experiencing. It's um, something to behold, I think, isn't it? So I now want to prepare for some future expansion. And we've got quite a bit of timber now, which means we can continue to build some more homes. So that's what I definitely want to do. Because if you run out of people to run the different production chains, that's when your um, town can really start to collapse. So we want to make sure we've constantly got the head room. You can see now we've just built an extra home. We now have the space for one extra family, which is what the little green bracket means up at the top there. So let's go ahead and fill in this entire space with homes. Again, you can see how it adjusts to the shape and the size. It's just, it's a great zoning system. We'll do some more intricate zonings later on in the series, but for right now, I just want to make sure all my burgage plots can have their gardens upgraded, which is what we were going to cover, wasn't it? So let's come back to that. So let's click on a house here. Uh, so we can see that their burgage plot is level 1. We can't upgrade it yet because we haven't met their amenities down here. So we need to give them a church, which we'll do a little bit later on in today's episode. And we also need to make sure that they have enough food and clothing available at the markets. Which they don't currently yet and we're not meeting the food demand at the minute. Or the clothing demand, sorry. So the best early game clothing is to actually work with some industry. Um, so the best way to do this is to have a tannery, which will turn hide into leather. Now, currently we're not gathering hide because we're not um, working with these wild animals here. So this is a good point now to go ahead and build up a, another gathering building for a hunting camp. So you don't want to place it here. It will give you a warning. Um, it overlaps with an animal habitat. This will cause migration. So these animals could run to the other side of the map which would be pretty bad for my settlement because this is actually really handy to have them so close by so i'm gonna have my hunter camp just on the main street here 
we'll start to build this and then we can assign a family to it and then we can start gathering and pelts and meat which will then be further sold on the food market and they will also be used in that tannery building as well uh, which i think we need stone to build the tannery don't we let me just double check that uh, no the tannery just wants timber so we can actually build that now but the tannery is where we're going to turn the pelts we're gathering from the hunter's cabin into a bit of leather that can then be sold on the market so i think i might just put this next to my trade post why not we're gaining plenty of timber at the minute everyone's growing quite nicely uh, we'll hopefully start to come out of the negative homelessness and um, disapproval uh, shortly it doesn't take that long to come away so more burger spots are coming in now we've got room for seven more families so as i mentioned earlier on in the video you will only grow if your approval is above 50 percent. so you really want to make sure you're getting that approval up nice and high and there we go we're now starting to get a positive value on the approval because of the uh, market food variety starting to come up now so once we get more families in this is when you know we can come back to the granary and say yeah okay we can afford to stock the granary now but otherwise i recommend you just sit back and uh enjoy it you can also see we've had resources stolen by bandits uh, let's actually click on this so if you click on the bandit they've stolen 10 tools from us uh, you don't actually see them steal it they kind of it just teleports to them if you like but it's just a way to reduce your resources due to the presence of bandits so here they are right here's the rapscallions the ruffians they're fighting with each other they're doing all sorts of nefarious deeds and tasks i imagine it's uh cool to see them here isn't it <laughs> it's really cool so let's zoom out to see where these are uh, so they are currently in the top left corner of the map possibly the furthest <laughs> that they could possibly be from me and the more of these will spawn and the greater difficulty you have as well the more of them that will spawn and um, you can send your militias and your mercenaries to come and deal with them and you will get a choice once you wipe them out and go to their camp to either send it to the treasury wealth or send it to regional wealth it's going to be a little while yet before we fight any raiders or bandits but just know that they are present on the map and i have been raided before as well i'll leave some screenshot of this up on the video i went to set up a second settlement and they burnt it down <laughs> leaving nothing but charred wood and corpses in their way it was very depressing very sad uh, but for, for right now we just want to start moving through our production chains and we want to start getting uh, these satisfied so we need a church and we need clothing both of which we're working on right now so let's come back to our residential and check out our church so for this church we need 20 planks right now we have zero planks so we want to come back to gathering and we now need to also supply a saw pit so i'm going to keep this near my wood production it's always a good idea it's kind of like keep your forestry all local to each other because the uh, saw pit sorry you know it wants timber so having it right next to this pile of timber is going to be good just for general production reasons so let's have our saw pit just next to our logging camp here build that there and then we'll also give it a connection as well so they're going to start building the saw pit over time and you can see now that our woodcutters lodge and our logging camp is beginning to make a dent in this forest right it is coming down slowly but surely so let's let that fast forward and then we can then start to stockpile the materials needed for the church which will be the next major building that we'll put down now i probably want to put the church somewhere in the town center so while that does build why don't we scope out an area here so this is kind of the fun with manor wards every start because your resources and what resources have rich deposits change it really makes each start quite refreshing and you spawn across all different areas of this huge map uh, this is a great example here now right we can see all of our drawings and our roads be etched into like the old sort of tapestry map it's just it, it, it's enough to make you smile isn't it <laughs> it's uh it's incredibly cool i absolutely love um just all the little aspects of the game it's coming together so well uh, delicious but we're now at 50 percent approval that market food variety is beginning to kick in and they are beginning to forget the fact that they were homeless for a little while 
it can really upset them if you do something that gives you a negative approval rating such as raising the taxes up i've had my taxes up quite high sometimes and they've taken a good year to get over it so do be careful with what you upset them with um because they will remember <laughs> so just be careful but we're above 50 percent now which means we can start growing and that will just happen randomly as long as there is spaces for people to live which currently we have seven free homes and above 50 percent, you will get new people it just takes a little bit of time so leave your game on three speed and it will come together i promise so right now our construction family is focusing on these burgage plots but i'd rather them focus on my saw pit so i'm going to click on the saw pit construction site and i'm going to tell them that this is of the highest priority you guys must get this built first so you will see them come over hopefully with the ox to drag some timber around it's also really fun just to see like this guy here he's just chopped some firewood he pops it back in the storage that has just been emptied by the guy working at the warehouse who's now transporting it back to be sold on the market to just like really follow the simulation of the villagers here it's uh it's very satisfying super cute you see this family here he's cut the wood he now has the firewood the firewood goes into storage he's then back out into the forest to get more wood to repeat the process uh, who knew that cutting watching little digital people cut some wood <laughs> would be so rewarding it's uh it really is wonderful so our saw pit is about to finish completion here so we only have one family at the minute that's doing work so if i was to sign another family here we're going to be back to zero which of course is bad we don't ever really want to do that so a good barometer is to say well what family can i remove is to simply just look at your resources we can see that we have 104 firewood which is enough fuel for 17 months so that's a really long time so let's actually just tell the woodcutters lodge family that you don't need to do that anymore we now have two spare families so we can afford to put one in the saw pit that family is going to come and start working at the saw pit and then we're going to start generating planks which is wonderful and again we are above 50 percent approval so hopefully we're going to be getting some new families arriving fairly soon let's also check out our market stalls as well we can see some people manning them here and just look at that <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic isn't it all the firewood there and then our food store where we've got the bread and the blueberries the baskets and baskets of blueberries to be to be specific 13 months worth of blueberries to be exact there you go see he just stocked up the firewood store which is <laughs> just oh it's, it's so nice it's just a, a wonderful game everyone i really hope you're looking forward, forward to more man awards content if you have any requests or ideas for videos or tips you want to see things you want to learn please do get them down in the comments below because there will be a lot of man awards content on the channel here now as you mentioned earlier there's a lot of construction work going on at the moment isn't there so i think now would be a good time to go ahead and gather uh, or get another ox because he's going to be able to move timber around the site a lot more for us so i'm going to come to my hitching post here and i'm going to buy another ox we also need to build another hitching post for him so let's come into logistics and we will build a second hitching post in our little town center here let's go for that and we'll also make that highest priority as well so our ox doesn't run off so wonderful we have uh, we've had family members join one of the settlers this is really nice we've also had a new family started to move in as well so this family here has increased in size and we also have a new family so now we have two unassigned workers left around which is good so we could leave that as it is now and construction will happen faster or you could also reassign these back to another building as well if you want also got our well down here which is super pretty very basic but a functional little well isn't it and we're gonna get their water and carry on about their daily lives we can hear a tree being felled somewhere they're cutting it all down here and hopefully now we should be starting to get some planks as well there we go so now we can see our two oxes moving around and just to confirm we did use regional wealth because it's the wealth of the village the wealth of the villagers so they bought an ox to allow them to build more efficiently we did also build our hunting camp over here as well didn't we so let's add in that new family into the hunting camp 
We want to come to advanced again, and we want to tell them to start gathering or hunting rather the wild animals here. But you can zoom in and see them. There's a bunch of books in this forest. Hopefully, some does as well. Yep, yeah, there you go. Uh, so if we hover over it, we can see that there are 20 animals here currently. You click on your hunter's camp, you can set the threshold of which they'll hunt to. I'd like to go down to five, so they won't basically hunt the herd below five animals. So obviously if you hunt everything, this resource pocket will disappear. You want to give your animals time to breed and repopulate again, otherwise you will lose the resource if you hunt them to extinction. So just be careful of that. But for right now, we're in the middle of August. It's a wonderful summer's day, isn't it? And we can just see the people moving around. Also, just had a warning that a bandit camp was sighted. So we just have another one here now. We've seen more bandits. We can zoom out and see where they are. And these are over to the northeast of us. So they're pretty far away, but important to notice that Ziwao or Ziwu, I don't know how to pronounce this. It does have bandits next door to our province, so that is something to bear in mind. Wonderful. Uh, so you also see this icon quite frequently as well. This is just that generic storage is full, so each site has a storage capacity. You just see here that it's storing logs and it's full because it just has a lot of logs in it because they are now starting to produce our uh, planks for us. It's really important you make sure you have roads drawn to these major sites. And we should hopefully see now that we have five planks available, which is very nice, isn't it? And we also want to build... We've also had a new family started moving in as well, which is really nice. They've gone to Burgage Plot Level 1, which is great news indeed. Don't forget to keep an eye on your supplies as well. Still 12 months of food and 10 months of fuel, so we should be okay just for a little while yet. Our tannery is also built here now as well, although no one's working here at the moment. So another resource we're going to need fairly sharpish is going to be stone so let's come into mining we want to grab the stone cutter camp now let's go all the way over here you can see the little outcrop of stones here and we just want to place this next door eventually we can also place mines on our resources over here but we probably won't get into that in today's episode so let's have a look at our resources we have 10 planks how many was it we needed for our church and we want to have 20, and we can kind of map out really where we want this now. The construction has also finished at Stonecutter's Camp. We can see our ox making his way back. And stone is something I'm going to want, so I'm going to add that family onto that already. And uh, you don't need to set up the work area here, as long as they're near stone, they will come and gather it. But that's kind of three of our very basic resources now cared for. We have stone, planks, and timber coming in in full force. I just want to wait for those final planks now. All right, we just need a few more. Hopefully these people aren't too far away from creating it for us. There we go. There's 20 planks. Now we can build our church. So this is a really nice one. So I'd like to start creating a bit of a um, sort of village centre. I suppose near our markets and near our production facilities might be quite nice, mightn't it? So why don't we go for... Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Let's have a little zoom out here. I guess the space in the clearing might be nice here, right? Next to the granary and what will eventually evolve around the town centre around it. So I'd like the front of the church facing this main road at least. Something like that. And then again, I can just draw up all these connecting roads. So people can access the church from multiple sides. And I guess we can sort of just weave this one off and... Over here, maybe start to map out a bit of a road network back to the main road. Allow some easier access in there. And I reckon we can probably wrap up our well in this too. We'll feed that one into there. And possibly down back to the main road as well. The smoother channels allows the villagers to move around a lot quicker. Cool. So we're growing here up to 57% approval now, 100% uh, public order rate, and we've still got some regional wealth. I was mentioning over here, wasn't I, which we will get to. <laughs> There's a lot to cover in this first episode already. Ed, but we have a backyard extension. 
So these things on the right that are all greyed out are all to do with level 2 houses. We'll cover artisans in a separate episode of this series. But at level 1 you can add a vegetable garden, which will grow vegetables. This is dependent on the size of the lot. But this is a pretty small lot, so they're not going to get a vast amount of vegetables. You can also um, put goats in here as well, which will give a passive yield of hides. Or you can also put chickens in which will give you a passive yield of eggs. I found those eggs to be a fantastic support to your food chain because berries and meat are kind of limited resources. Berries are obviously super seasonal and, you know, as is meat, you know, we've already hunted this herd down to five animals. So um, this hunter isn't particularly needed anymore. You can see him dragging the corpse back there too. He's going to gut it now as well. Which is just, I don't say it's cool, but it's, it's a bit grim. <laughs> but it's, it's just so realistic, isn't it? The level of authenticity and realism that Slavic Magic has tried to go for with Mana Lords is fantastic. So we can now watch him gut that day that he's just been out and hunted. That's just wonderful, isn't it? So if he's now hunted um, his herd to its lowest limit, once he's finished processing this, we can actually remove the family um, from the building. You can also see it has a carcass in the building as well, which is a transitionary resource, which means that it's not going to stay there forever because obviously it's being butchered into meat. Fantastic. The people loading up their fire store here as well <laughs> with the cart. Absolutely wonderful. It's never not going to make me smile. But either way, let's go ahead and make sure this church gets built. This is of the highest priority. So let's go ahead and get the church up. We can watch all our oxen and people bring the supplies needed in order to get this done. New family also in as well. We now have that two surplus in there too, don't we? We've still got plenty of space for new families to come in. So those early houses are now starting to pay off for us. And once we get that regional wealth in, which we definitely will do via some trade agreements, uh, we will be able to start paying for these guys to have their own chicken coops, which will all support their own food supply. That just grows from there. It's um, a very fun system to get to, to grips with mana lords. So for right now, we should have some pelts. We do. We have 14 hides. So I can now actually assign someone to the tannery and they will start developing leather, which can be sold at the market. For people to start having clothes which is one of their requirements for leveling up so we want to make sure that we meet these and then we can get our first houses up to level two when they are at level two they do start paying into the regional wealth fund which is what we'll start using to make lots more money via the trade mechanic but we will get to that in later episodes there we go a clothing store has now just finished being built but the, late, the family that works at the tannery now has a store over on the market as well. Which is very cool. We've also had 15 berries stolen by bandits. There's not a vast amount that I can do about this right now. We don't have the money to hire mercenaries. And I don't have my own strong enough army to deal with a bandit camp just yet. We will one day, but for right now we're just going to have to deal with them stealing. Also, don't forget to keep checking your food supplies as well. It's still okay for food and fuel here. Seven months worth of fuel. And we're about to come into the autumn where firewood consumption is doubled. So you just want to be wary of that. How are we doing for planks at the minute? Yeah, I think I'm going to remove my family from the saw pit because I don't particularly need the planks right now. And add them back into the woodcutter's lodge because I want to make sure I've got a big supply of firewood for that winter otherwise we can return to the church and watch it undergo its magnificent construction i'm sure hopefully they'll start the build process fairly soon so i've played this game a bunch of times now and i've always found this to be the most sensible start and um, it gives you a really nice footing gets you a good approval rating and um, gets you set up for early game food alongside planning for later early game food with those eggs in the chicken coops that we've talked about. So this has been a pretty sensible start for me. It's given me pretty good success. Let me see our ox. 
Oh, Oxen, I guess. There's two of them, isn't there? <laughs> uh, the hitching posts here. You can also upgrade these hitching posts into stables as well, which we might do a little later on once we start to get some horses. So we won't get any horses until we start trading anyway. But I see all the people here, all the carpenters. Building up our first church for our town here. Look at those rich autumn colours as well. Stunning game to look at everyone. I really can't wait for you all to play this. Watch our little fences going up. Pretty wonderful you can uh, get in here as well. We'll have a little walk around our town as well by the um, third person's perspective, shall we? Uh, this little visit mode up here in the top right, uh, you'll be dropped in as a general miscellaneous lord. It's not the guy you pick at the start of the game. At least it's not yet, it's not. One day that might change, but uh, you can now enjoy a walk around your village. Uh, you can go for a little jog. Say hello to the ox over here. Enjoy our granary. Oh, it's just great, isn't it? <laughs> Wonderfully pretty game. We can have a little jog uh, down to the market here as well. Wonderful. Absolutely fabulous. <laughs> Just it's unrivaled, isn't it? Unrivaled. Berries bursting with flavour. Carcasses, firewood and leather. What a wonderful market. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic. Really precious. Cool. So now we have our wooden church and our approval rating is up to 62%, which is grand. That's really good. Uh, we've got... 11 months worth of food and 9 months worth of fuel. Um, our berry picker is still going strong. He's got a ton of berries to go there. Bearing in mind that's also been affected by our double berry deposit. So that's really the backbone of our food chain there, isn't it? Everyone's been eating blueberries for literal months at a time. But they're happy enough in Manor Lord. So now let's return to our homes. And we can see that we have satisfied every one of their needs at level 1. So we can now spend four timber, for which we currently have 31, to bring this up to level two. Now to get our next development point, that is what we need. If you hover over the province here, you can see that we need a burgage pot level two or higher. We need two of them. So I'm going to upgrade these first two houses into level two houses, which is further going to advance our settlement. You will still be able to add the backyard extension at level 2, but you can't do it whilst it's upgrading to level 2. So there's a very small distinction. Um, at level 3, the houses do get roof tiles, which significantly changes their aesthetic. But for right now, we just want to get to level 2, and that's going to give us our next development point, which we can then use to unlock trade, but I think we'll do that next episode. So you can enjoy the sights and sounds of the construction of level 2 on the way. Very satisfying, isn't it? There we go, there's one done. So right now we can see a comparison between a level 2 house and a level 1 house. So they just look a little bit more official, don't they? I guess they have wooden roofs opposed to thatched. And now we can still come in here and add that. I won't talk too much about this artisan stuff yet. Basically you can turn a family, it takes them out of the work pool up here in the top left and turns their home into an artisan business, so you can make them into cobblers, um, into boyers, into joiners, into tailors, but you lose them from your work pool, but you gain a bit more of a niche resource through here. We'll cover it more in depth next episode, but just know that that mechanic is currently there. And then this should now be our level 2 one coming in, the ox are bringing in. You can see how quicker things get with that second ox. It does cost regional wealth, it's where I spent my first one. You'll also notice we've just gained two more regional wealth as well. That's because level two houses are going to start paying into regional wealth now. But again, I don't want to throw too much at you in one episode. <laughs> I just realise this is going to be way over an hour. But that does bring us to level two settlement and gives us that next development point. Which feels, I think, like a good place to bring the first episode of the Manor Lords Survival Guide to its close. So, I hope you have enjoyed it, guys. If you have, those likes, comments, and shares below. 
really do go a long way in helping grow the channel. And don't forget to subscribe if you are interested in Mana Lords. I'm planning on making a whole host of tier lists, tutorials, series and live streams on it. So subscribe indeed if you are new. It's going to be a whole lot of fun I think exploring this game together. Uh, this start we've covered in today's episode should get you set up with your basic resources, a good supply of food and get you to your first winter. And then next episode we'll start talking about trade, surviving the first winter and then starting to trade in some weapons so we can properly arm our militia and get them working and then also managing our resources because of course eventually our logging camp a little ways down the road here is going to start to clear out the forest that we've told it to work with so we need to make sure that they do have enough resources to go as well but if you have any questions please do get them down in the comments below expect plenty more man awards content on the channel now the embargo has lifted and a massive shout out to all the patrons that support the channel if you are interested in getting involved in that, there's early access, previews, podcasts and polls on the Patreon alongside the Instant Gaming link down below, which will give you some great deals for all your favourite games. But otherwise, I would like to thank you all so much for watching Man Lords. Super excited to cover this game with you all. Let me know what you think of it, but I'll shut up and leave it there. Let's thank you all so much again for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.